Hello and welcome to the Everything's Black Mike podcast with me, Aaron Stokes. We're here for a very special solo episode because the transfer window has now closed. You can all breathe a sigh of relief. It's done. It's over. The team has settled. And we're going to look back at what's been quite a deflating and underwhelming summer for Newcastle United after they failed to get any deals done on deadline day and they missed out on their key target of the window, Mark Gahey. Now, we're recording this on Saturday afternoon. The window closed late last night. It was a very... Long day yesterday, but while it might have been long in terms of the hours that we worked, it, it was pretty underwhelming and pretty quiet in terms of what we had to report on here at the Chronicle. Um, there was always sort of um, the slightest of chances that they could resurrect a deal for Mark Gahey, but that was shut down pretty soon after Eddie Howe's morning press conference. And after that, we sort of thought that if anything was going to come for Newcastle United, it was going to come completely out of the left field. Um, and ultimately Newcastle did make a very late inquiry about Nottingham Forest, Anthony Alanga. But apart from that, the only business that they did on the day was some outgoings uh, for some fringe players. Now, we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about Mark Gahey. We're going to talk about, um, you know, Eddie Howe. We're going to talk about the new structure in place at St James's Park. We're going to talk about a whole range of things. Um, not all of it is going to be positive. You know that I like to try and stay positive on this on this show and I will find some positives because it isn't all doom and gloom. Um, but I must warn you, if you don't want to hear the negatives, then this is probably the time to switch off because I think the overwhelming emotion that we're all feeling right now is is one of, of disappointment. And I think that's putting it quite mildly. You've got a Newcastle United side who finished seventh last season. They've missed out on Europe. They've taken a massive step backwards in that regard. Um, you've replaced a very good sporting director in the summer with Dan Ashworth. I completely get that. You know, that wasn't Newcastle's choice to let him go. He wanted to go to Manchester United. But then you've brought in a very reputable um, pair of hands and a very experienced sporting director in Paul Mitchell. Where on earth, you know, now that we're sitting here after the windows closed, where on earth was this big, ambitious, bold, brave summer that we all expected that was going to take Newcastle from that seventh place back to the Champions League because you look around the Premier League and all of Newcastle United's rivals have strengthened. You look at the likes of um, Arsenal and Manchester United and Chelsea, certainly Chelsea, those teams that are in and around Newcastle. But then you also look at the likes of Villa, who are hoping that last season wasn't a repeat. You look at the business that Brighton have done, fantastic work. Um, Forest have kept hold of their big players. West Ham have went out and really spent well. And then you're left looking at Newcastle thinking, you know, where where was this big marquee sign and where was any sign that was going to really improve the start on 11? And I don't want to be too disrespectful to the players that they have signed, but, you know, we're looking at this team right now and it looks like it's going to be the same 11, um, the same first strongest 11 as it was last season. Now, let's dive in at the transfers that they did make because they did make five signs. Although the first one that I'm going to mention, I'm not going to count because I, Lewis Hall was always going to be an Newcastle United player. So in my mind, they've actually only signed four um, despite officially bringing in five. Lewis Hall, obviously a fantastic player. He, in many people's eyes, is, is the left back of this season. He will no doubt be fighting it out with Lloyd Kelly. We've already seen that this season. Um but that last last summer was, was a very good move and it was always going to be made permanent once those obligations were met. Then we've got Lloyd Kelly. Now, Lloyd Kelly is a good, solid addition. I like him. He'll fit into this team. Eddie Howe trusts him. Crucially, he costs nothing. He's a very good, solid buy on a budget. He's a reliable pair of hands. There we go. Uh, as you can tell, I've got nothing against this transfer. Um, but when Lloyd Kelly is your, your most exciting signing of the summer, or maybe not your most exciting signing, but your, your biggest name that you've brought in, you know something has gone wrong. Um, and like I say, I like Lloyd Kelly. I think he'll fit in well. He's versatile. And and it was a move that made sense on paper. I've got no qualms with that move. But when they signed him in July, I thought, right, okay, well, there's your squad player signed. There's your rotation player signed. Go out and get a, one or two bigger names. And Newcastle United haven't done that. Then you've got the goalkeeping situation. Now, going into transfer deadline day, there was a lot of confusion. Would... Uh, Martin Dubravka remain at the club. We, we suspected for a large chunk of the window that he was going to go. He's obviously missed the last two match day squads, which was, again, a little hint that we thought he might be out the door. But there was also a lot of speculation about Odysseus Flakademos going. Now, uh, he obviously came to Newcastle as part of the deal that saw Eddie, uh, Elliot Anderson leave the club. Um, and I actually thought when they signed him, 
obviously the 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 talk at the time was that it was a very low figure um trusting Eddie Howe the way that I do the way the fans do I thought you know what if anybody is going to get Eddie Howe to take this struggling goalkeeper um from a really poor season at Forest to back to the form that he showed at Benfica when he was reaching Champions League quarterfinals when he's winning league titles Eddie Howe's the man to do that and I thought you know what I, I don't really I don't really mind that deal since since you know I thought that uh, about six weeks ago uh, to two months ago he hasn't featured um Eddie Howe clearly doesn't trust him there's been a lot of speculation this week that he was going to go and we've also actually discovered that the fee wasn't so low as it was first being made out and actually Newcastle probably had to pay a little bit over the odds um to get him while also waiting for us to take a punt on um Elliot Anderson at the same time so those two obviously going into deadline day, it was a little bit of a confusion. You know, would um, would Vlakadimos leave? Would Dubravka leave? There was also a little bit of chatter in the morning that it was going to be um, James Trafford coming in um, the other way. You know, Eddie Howe likes the player. He, he, he has made his inquiries earlier in the summer. And that, you know, that was a move that didn't seem like it was going to go away, James Trafford to Newcastle. Ultimately, Burnley have sold so many players this summer. I'm not surprised that he hasn't left the club. Um, but I would definitely be keeping your eye on James Trafford uh, and a potential move to Newcastle in the future. Then you've got, obviously, John Ruddy coming in. I don't really mind that deal either. And I know some people are going to be thinking, what? But look, Loris Harris has gone. Eddie Howe wanted a backup. Who isn't going to play? John Ruddy was available from a free. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Then you've got William Masula. Now, if somebody had told you when Newcastle signed William Masula uh, two and a half weeks ago that he was going to be the last signing of the summer, I think there would have been a full-scale riot outside St. James's Park because William Masula, again, like Lloyd Kelly, I've got nothing against the deal. He's uh, a young talent. He's got bags of potential. He looked very, very good on the one occasion we've seen him in the Seller Cup. Eddie Howe. And Jason Tyndall have scouted him for a number of years and they clearly see somebody who fits the Alexander Isaac mould, who isn't going to mind playing second or third choice and who is young enough to be moulded into a very, very good striker. Again, nothing against that deal. But he, again, is a sign-in for the future. He is not for the here and now. And I think what is telling is the fact that um, William Asula has barely been sent to warm up in the last couple of games. You know, he wasn't used in the Premier League uh, opener against Southampton okay fair enough they were down to 10 men uh, he wasn't used at Bournemouth and he wasn't even using the Carabao Cup on Wednesday he is very much going to be a player for the future Asula, Kelly, great but the fact that those are our only real two first choice uh, sorry first team signings is, is nothing short of a disgrace really because as I've said this is a club that has publicly said they want to be number one has um, dragged every aspect of this club from the gutter, from the team, from the uh, feeling among the fan base, from the finances they're pumping in to the the fan zone, to everything. They, they have barely put a foot wrong. Um, but this summer, it, and I think the reason that the reaction to the window has been so overblown and people are so frustrated and so angry is because Newcastle United, the Newcastle United of you, we're not used to this. We are used to um, exciting summer transfer windows. We're used to ambition. We're used to um, Newcastle really having a good go, especially in those summer windows. Alexander Rees at the marquee signing of 2022. Sandro Tonali, the marquee signing of 2023. Where was the big name that we all wanted in 2024? It hasn't arrived, unfortunately. Um, and I've seen a lot of people pointing out on social media that, you know, this is a a summer window that smacked of of the Mike Ashley era. And if I'm honest, I, I don't think I'll have, you know, too many uh, disagreements with those because it is a this this window does look like a Mike Ashley era uh, window, unfortunately. Now obviously things have happened um behind the scenes at the club. It's been a, a summer of turmoil behind the scenes. And and why I say that is because you've had big figures leave the club, you've had new figures arrive. Um and it's going to take time to get things up to speed. You know, I, I appreciate I've just spent the first 10 minutes of this episode calling the club out. It is going to take time for Eddie Howe to work with Paul Mitchell and Paul Mitchell equally to work with Darren Eels. Um, 
and Amanda Stavely and Murdad Gaduce going was a big blow to Eddie Howe. It's a big blow to the football club, the fans, you know, absolutely worship the ground that they walked on. Uh, they got the club, they were the they were the public face in front of the club. They they fronted up to the big issues when they needed to. Amanda Stavely, we all know, put um vast amount of energy and resources and finances into that women's club and and the women's club will be worse off with her not there being a champion so i get that there is caveats to this summer it hasn't been plain sailing behind the scenes um but i remember when we were we, we spoke to eddie howe out in germany and we all expected eddie howe to give his first interview this summer and we all thought the main co- topic of conversation was going to be england Gareth Southgate had just left after the Euros. Eddie Howe was the bookmaker's favourite to take the job. We were all worried that he was going to go. And he came out and he did this interview. And actually, the, 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 th- the bigger line from the interview wasn't England. It was, you know, I will stay at Newcastle, but only if I'm happy in this new setup. Now, there has been conflicting reports over the last couple of days. And I, and I don't think we are going to know 100% for sure until the dust finally settles in a couple of weeks or months. Whether... Eddie Howe and Paul Mitchell have have been on the same page in terms of transfer targets, notably Mark Gahey, um, or whether there's been a little bit of friction there. As I say, it's going to take time. But clearly, you know, this summer will take a toll. Eddie Howe will not like the fact that he hasn't had any players strengthened because ultimately this is football, it's brutal. And if Newcastle's results don't go the way that they hope in a couple of months' time, it isn't going to be Paul Mitchell getting the sack or Darren Eels getting the sack. Eddie Howe's head is on the chopping block and that is why it's so crucial that he needed to be strengthened and that's why he's pushed so hard for signings this summer. Now, one bone of contention across certainly the last couple of weeks among the fans, among, you know, reportedly senior figures in the club is Mark Gahey. Now, I think the reason that this summer stings so much and that we're all really hurting from it is because Newcastle really have, have not came out of this Mark Gahey saga looking good at all. It's dragged out publicly when it didn't need to. It's, not only is it dragged out publicly, Newcastle have always been on the back foot in this saga. They've never been on the front foot. Every time there was a report saying that it was close or Newcastle were edging closer, the next day something would come out and, and they weren't. And, you know, for a club that wants to be professional and wants to rid this tag of, of being Mike Ashley run and, you know, wants to be really suave operators in the market... Mark Gahey saga really has not done them any favours. Now, what stings even more is that Oliver Glasner came out yesterday, and I don't know whether this is a bit of showmanship on his part, but he came out, spoke to the media at one o'clock, and he said, uh, Mark Gahey will be staying, and to be honest, it was never really in doubt. Now, when you're Newcastle United and you've spent three weeks um, of your window, the last three weeks of your window, trying to get this player over the line, and you've had three or four or five bids or offers or negotiations rejected, it's not a good look when the when the selling club are saying, yeah, well, you know what, we never really thought we were going to lose him anyway. And I think, uh, I hate to admit it, but Steve Parrish and everyone at Palace has played a blinder. They've also had a fantastic end to the window because not only have they kept Mark Gahey, they've signed Max Sensenko from uh, Wolfsburg and they've done a very, very late deal for Trevor Chalabar. Now, Trevor Chalabar wouldn't have been the sexiest of names, but on deadline day, when Eddie Howe wants a sign-in and Newcastle need to strengthen their centre-back options, go out and get Trevor Chalabar on loan. He's already been told that he doesn't have a future at Chelsea. Um, you've seen the type of deals Chelsea have been forced to do in the last couple of days. Uh, the last couple of days, Ori selling Raheem Sterling or loaning him rather at Chelsea uh, to Arsenal, where Chelsea are paying the lion's share of the wages. Arsenal have got a fantastic deal there. Palace, I'm sure, have got a fantastic deal for Trevor Chalabar because Chelsea were desperate. And yes, he wouldn't have been this big, sexy marquee signing, but I tell you what, we'd be feeling a lot better right now knowing that Trevor Chalabar, someone of that ilk, um, was in the squad rather than rather than nobody. And and the fact that we're still, you know, going to be playing Emil Kraft and, and Dan Byrne at centre-back tomorrow. So, yes, let's just take a breath. You know, the, the Mark Gahey saga hasn't made Newcastle look good. It has rubbed people up the wrong way. You know, they will be very very stung from this um and look you know looking on the positive side is there now a chance to go get him in january probably because you've got to remember he's still got two years left on his palace deal and um, despite the fact they've made him captain and they've kept him there's nothing to suggest he's going to sign a new deal at palace which means essentially in january um 
that is Palace's last chance to sell him really for fair market value before he enters the final 12 months of his contract. So let's look on the bright side of that, maybe. Um, maybe Newcastle go back in, in January. Maybe they lose out to another club. Who knows? But um, that Mark Gay he saw hasn't made Newcastle look good. Now, we learned on Thursday night that it was looking highly unlikely that Newcastle were going to get the Palace defender. And that meant uh, it was a very, very tense press conference for Eddie Howe on Friday morning. We spoke to him about about 12 hours before the deadline. Um, and he pretty much made it clear that Newcastle were willing to step away from all deals if it wasn't the right the right deal for them. And that has been the Eddie Howe's mantra of the summer. He didn't want to sign players for the sake of it. Um he said that no deal was better than a, than a bad deal, to, to coin a phrase of, of some former Tory prime ministers. Um, but what he did say to us yesterday on Friday morning was, there's sh- such a short time left, it is looking difficult. This window, as I've said many times, has been difficult and it continues to be for us. We're in a really difficult situation with PSR and available funds, attracting the right players and the players we think can make a difference. It's a very delicate spot for us. We've got to try and hit hit it right and if we don't, then probably doing nothing, as frustrating as that is, is probably the best option. Now, I think there's a a couple of things in that Eddie Howe statement which are quite telling. One, um, you know, he has made it clear that he, you know, he doesn't want to go out and and, and sign players that aren't going to make Newcastle United better. And you're going to look and think, well, look why they've gone out and signed John Ruddy and Vlaka Dimos and all these type of squad players. But I think Eddie Howe means he doesn't want to go out and spend big, big money um, you know, marquee money on a player who he doesn't think is right for his system, right for this team, right for this group, has the right credentials, has the right attitude. Um, and I think that's why we've we've maybe seen um, no late moves for anyone in the last couple of days. Now, also what he mentioned, which is, is very pertinent and it matters, and it's, a, again, a massive caveat of the summer, but PSR. You know, Newcastle fans are going to be sick of hearing about this acronym, but it's true. You know, Newcastle have been hamstrung by their own making, essentially, because um, they weren't, they haven't been good enough sellers. They haven't raised enough money, which you know isn't probably their fault. It's Mike Ashley's fault because Newcastle are starting from such a disadvantaged position to try and catch up with their rivals. But even after selling selling uh, Ali Anderson, even after selling Jan Kuba Minter, Newcastle were always going to be up against it in terms of uh, PSR. And, you know, again, it, it doesn't, they don't want it to come back and bite them. Daniels has spoken about not wanting to be caught short again with, with you know, really late panic selling as they as they found with Anderson and Minter. Um, so we know that Newcastle do, you know, they do have that in the back of their mind. It hasn't gone away just because they've avoided a points deduction uh, or I think they've avoided a points deduction last uh, June with selling Anderson with selling Minter, it's still very much at the forefront of their minds. Um, now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to I'm going to bring this up on screen. If you're listening on the on the audio uh, provider, I will just read it out. But Newcastle's net spend since since 2020 in the season of 1920, this they had a net spend of plus 33. The season after it was plus 35. The first season of the takeover, it was plus 118. Obviously, we remember they signed Kieran Trippier, Bruno Gamares, uh, all these types of players to stave them, uh, stave away the threat of relegation. In 2022 to 23, it was a net spend uh, of plus 171. Last season, it was a net spend of plus 84.6. And this summer, for the first time, uh, it is a minus net spend of 22 million. So that again goes to point to the fact that Newcastle United have spent so heavily in the last couple of windows that maybe they just needed this year of no spending. Maybe they needed a January where they should probably have sold, but they didn't. They needed a summer of um, a balance in the books. But only time will tell if that's the case because now they need a massive January. Eddie Howe needs to drag this squad through to the winter market, hopefully keep them in touch with the Champions League. And then they need to go out and 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 sign someone. One for the morale of the fan base, for the sanity of the fan base, who have grown to become really accustomed to these exciting signings, because Newcastle United need to make them if they want to get to where they want to be. Um, and one to make sure that Eddie Howe is finally belatedly being strengthened. Now, again, they might look at it and think we we can get Mark Gahey cheaper um, in January. Now. Something we haven't mentioned yet is the fact that Mark his new defensive partner, Chaddy Riyad, just signed from Real Betis, um, suffers a serious knee injury last week. And that 
it, you know, we understand bumped Palace's price, his valuation up, and again made it harder for Newcastle to sign. So in January, when that player's back and things have changed, and and Palace maybe feel like they they desperately need to sell because he won't sign a new deal, they could resurrect it. Um, but those stats there about the net spend again just go to show how unusual this summer was because Newcastle have have you know they've got the checkbook out in recent summers. They haven't this summer, but again maybe maybe it was needed just to just to balance the books. Um, but crucially, and I think, look, just to just to end this podcast, I, you know, I know you'll all have your opinion, and I know that the opinion will will majorly or, or predominantly be negativity and disappointment. I am disappointed. You know, I, I I feel like I can't really sugarcoat it because I think it's quite inexcusable that Newcastle haven't found something, someone, somewhere that was going to strengthen Eddie Howe's team. They brought four players in, two of which we we will probably. Never seen any castle shirt, if very rarely. Yes, they've signed Kelly, good addition. Asula potentially could become a star in the future. Um, but you're looking at that team now and you are hanging your hat or you're hanging all your hopes on the fact that Sandro Tonali comes back and is a brand new sign and you're hanging your hopes on Harvey Barnes having a really good breakthrough season that we should have seen from him last year. You are hoping and crossing everything that they don't have an injury crisis. Um like they did last season, because it's one or two injuries to that team, and all of a sudden you are talking about a, a team that is going to be lucky to finish eighth, not not fourth. So the dust will settle. We'll learn more in the next couple of weeks. You know, as I say, I'm recording this on Saturday. The window's only been been closed about twelve hours. I still feel like I'm I'm running on fumes after yesterday. Um, but there's big questions to answer from Darren Eels. There's big questions to answer from Paul Mitchell. There will undoubtedly be questions to answer from Eddie Howe. Um, but the pressure is on Eddie Howe now, and the pressure is also on the ball. The pressure is on Eddie Howe because he needs to get results with his team. He needs to pr- prove uh, he can work miracles with this group now that they're back on the training pitch every week and they're playing one game instead of three. Um, and Darren Ears and Paul Mitchell, I think I think the fans want to hear from them. Um, fans want to know why you know why this window ended the way it did, how it, how it transpired the way it did, why there wasn't any movement, why they also failed again to get... You know some some high wages off the books. They struggled quite a bit to get a lot of loan players out the door. You know we haven't really touched on that because we've spent so long worrying about what Newcastle haven't done in terms of signing players. You could we could also do a completely separate episode, which we might have to do this week about the players they've struggled to get rid of um, at the minute. Isaac Hayden, Jamal Lewis, um, some of the youngsters that are, that have, we thought would go out on loan haven't. Grant Kowal, Alex Murphy still at the club, so. There, there is questions to be answered, and I suspect in the next couple of days, um, we will get those answers. But in the meantime, um, we will have the Monday show back with myself and Andrew Musgrove. It feels like the first time in forever that we'll be back together in the same studio. Um, judging from the text that I've had from Andrew Musgrove in the last couple of days, I suspect that um, he will be in a very fiery and feisty mood, which I know it doesn't sound like Andrew, but I suspect that he is... He is probably going to go a little bit harder than I have in this podcast. And I feel like I've been, you know, more negative than I usually have in this episode. But we will have that back on Monday. Um, so do tune in to that. Thank you very much for joining us on YouTube or if you've watched us, uh, listen, sorry, on your on your podcast provider. Um, we've had the View from the Opposition podcast in the last couple of days with Lee Wilmot from Football London talking all about Spurs. Um, and we've also had uh, an episode of myself and John Gibson. So do go back and listen to those um, before Newcastle plays Spurs. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and we'll speak to you very, very soon.